With two years of combat experience, Cheesecake the Antweight Robot has become lean and mean. He survived his last tournament with very little damage, so as I prepared him for my next tournament, I didn't make any significant upgrades. The weapon is still hitting hard, the drive motor holders are still holding up, and the springy wheels are still absorbing shocks. I did, however, bring some new parts just in case. Some titanium cleat wheels that can help save some weight if needed, and some thicker weapon bars that... I don't know, might be stronger against vertical spinners, might be easier to control, it's just nice to have options. With everything packed up, Cheesecake and I flew to St. Louis, Missouri to attend the St. Louis Comic Con Robot Smash, hosted by the newly formed Southeast Missouri Combat Robotics Group, and sponsored by Palm Beach Bots. This tournament was the first one hosted by Southeast Missouri Combat Robotics, or SEMO, and they're planning to host more of them in the future, so if you're in the Midwest and you want to get into combat robotics, you can check out their Facebook page to stay up to date. As usual, this tournament was a double elimination bracket, which means if you lose once, you move into the loser's bracket, and then if you lose again, you're out of the tournament. Each fight is one-on-one, -on -one with a time limit of just two minutes. You win a fight by disabling your opponent so they can no longer move. And if both robots can still move at the end of the time limit, then a panel of three judges declares the winner based on the damage each robot did, the aggression they showed, and the control they had over the fight. My first opponent was Azreal, a big scary undercutter with a well-armored nose. This meant that I would need to use my Cake Slice attachment, a small upside-down wedge which is designed to deflect my opponent's weapon downward. Let's see if it still works. Three, two, the floor is slicker than I expected. Well, that's unfortunate. You can request one unstick per match if you get yourself stuck on the arena, and Cheesecake was really stuck, so, uh. <laughs> percussive maintenance to the rescue. Don't worry, Cheesecake is fine. Okay, that's not a good sign. Fortunately, if two robots get stuck together, they can be pulled apart and the match resumed, and it doesn't count as one of your unsticks. Three, two, one, fight, robots, fight! Dang it, Cheesecake, what is it with you and getting stuck in the walls? At this point, for better or worse, I could still wiggle back and forth just enough for the referee to consider it movement, and then the time expired for the match. Because both robots were still moving, technically, the winner was chosen by a panel of three judges. By a split, two-to-one decision, the victory was given to Cheesecake. Honestly, I don't feel too good about this win. I followed the rules as they were given, but in hindsight, the polite thing to do would have been to tap out after that second stick. Getting stuck in the wall twice is not great sportsmanship, even if it was an accident. I did make sure to give my used weapon to the driver of Azreel. He deserved to win something for that fight. Fortunately, he was just glad we got in some good hits, but I'll try to be more mindful in the future. To prevent this from happening again, I switched to my thicker weapon, which hopefully shouldn't dig into the walls like my regular weapon did, and I decided to try on my cleat wheels maybe just to get better traction on the floor, we'll see if it helps. My next fight was against Holy Pokes. This is a type of robot I've never seen before. It's a kind of jackhammer which quickly and repeatedly stabs a metal spike at its opponent. I wasn't sure how well it would work, but it was definitely the cutest ant weight at the tournament, and I really hated to have to fight it, but the driver of Holy Pokes specifically asked for no mercy. In three, two, one, fight, robots, fight! Let's see what's left of 
Holy Pokes is almost no longer Holy Pokes. You do have the option to tap out if you'd like. Uh, not Cheesecake has the option. Just keep him doing what he's doing. Cheesecake, now the half of Holy Pokes stuck in the corner just a little bit. Holy Pokes has still got some motion. Is his jackhammer, is his weapon still active? Looks like not. Cheesecake still giving it all he's got. I'm going to begin the countdown. And no, nope, he's still got some action here. Just deep in the corner. Looks like he's stuck. I know you hate the walls, Cheesecake, but the arena is not your enemy. Holy Pokes! You still going? Uh-oh, something's up with my drive. He's not, he's not giving up, he's gonna go. Just giving him a little bit of a love tap there. At this point, I didn't really want to keep beating him up, and my drive was acting strangely, so we both just kind of flopped around for the rest of the fight. Three, two, one, that is match. Let's hear it! Aw, he's just... he's just a little guy. I'm sorry. I made sure he had enough time to tap out if he wanted to, but the No Mercy agreement stood, and Cheesecake got the win. And the driver of Holy Pokes definitely got to learn more about his robot. I did lose half my drive, though, which was kind of strange. It turned out that the hub of my wheel was loose on its axle, because the set screw which clamps it onto the axle wiggled loose. I really need to check all of my fasteners between each fight. I also nearly got stuck in the wall again, but I think my thicker weapon saved me this time. My next fight was against Fallen, a one-pound Fingertech beater bar robot. I always dreaded the day I would have to fight a beater bar. Fortunately, my chunky weapon was working well so far, so I figured this was the best shot I'd have against a robot like Fallen. Let's see whose weapon wins. I thought I did lose a piece there, but it was actually from Fallen. Now that's a fight! I wanted to go weapon on weapon with Fallen, and it did not disappoint. I thought I'd be able to break his weapon eventually, but it held up the entire time, so the only way to win was to eat his wheels. What can I say? Cheesecake is just a hungry little guy. My fourth fight was one I'd been looking forward to for years. Horovertical. This is a robot which can be a horizontal spinner, or a vertical spinner, and it can change the angle of its weapon during a fight. So if a vertical spinner isn't working, it can try being a horizontal spinner instead. Really genius design, and I'm really curious to see how Cheesecake handles it. Uh oh, there goes half my drive. Oh, it looks like 
I just can't deliver the weapon. Drop on the deck and flop like a fish, cheesecake. Now that was fun. By a split judge's decision, the victory was given to Cheesecake. The first big hits made Cheesecake lose his left side drive, but I was able to even things up by taking off one of Horvertzical's wheels. After that, I was able to show more aggression and control by moving toward my opponent and getting a few more hits in, which was barely enough to get Cheesecake the win. Taking Cheesecake apart, I realized just how rattled the robot actually was, my left side drive motor went out because one of its wires fell off, and my right side drive motor holder got bent in one of those exchanges, and the bushing on top of my weapon motor got so loose I'm surprised it didn't fall off, not to mention the big bites taken out of my armor. I ended up giving my rear armor to the driver of Horovertical as a trophy, and he was kind enough to give me his weapon disc, which got bent really badly in one of our collisions. Because of all this damage, I decided it was time to switch to my backup robot. It's fairly common for teams at all different weight classes to have at least one fully built backup robot, because sometimes the damage is just too severe or too widespread to be repaired in time. Fortunately, my thick chunky weapon wasn't getting stuck in the walls or in the floor, so I moved it over to the backup robot, and I decided to go back to my springy wheels because the cleated wheels were definitely putting too much force back into my drive motors. My next fight was against Dobby a second one-pound beater bar robot, with a previous first-place finish on its record. Cheesecake isn't in Boston anymore. This is where the beater bars come out to play. So let's see what happens now. Well, I was trying to go weapon on weapon, but I accidentally hit his wheel in exactly the right spot. I gave the other driver some space to figure out his next move, and he decided it was best to tap out and not risk a bigger repair job. Honestly, a good move, but I wish I'd been able to hit his weapon and really give the audience a good show, like my previous fight against Fallen. This victory sent Cheesecake into the Antweight Finals, where he would fight the winner of the loser's bracket. The loser's bracket was a brutal place to be, and the final loser's bracket fight was between Dobby and Horovertzical. Horovertzical started out strong, going weapon on weapon with Dobby's beater bar, but then Dobby landed on top of Horovertzical and cut through his weapon wires, leaving Horovertzical neither horizontal nor vertical for the rest of the fight. When the time ran out, the judges awarded the win to Dobby, which meant that the Antweight final was Dobby vs. Cheesecake, round two. We both agreed to make the fight entertaining this time, so let's see if we can put on a show. Thank <laughs> you. 
uh oh, something's wrong with my throttle. didn't hear no bell. No, that was very good. Okay. I think that makes up for our first fight, which wasn't nearly as entertaining. As you might expect, Dobby needed some help getting back to the door. Eh. <laughs> it's over, Alex. <laughs> we were able to get some big weapon-on-weapon -weapon hits, and after this big hit near the end, Cheesecake landed upside down, and my throttle reverse wouldn't engage for some reason, so instead I had to think backwards for the rest of the fight. But in the end, Cheesecake still had a good meal by eating some wheels. With this final victory, Cheesecake took first place in the Antweight bracket, with Dobby in second and Hora Vertical in third. This was a great first tournament for SEMO Combat Robotics, and they could always use more spectators and more builders, so check them out if you're in the Midwest. As for Cheesecake, there's really not much else I want to improve about the design. Cheesecake kind of feels. complete, you know? Now don't worry. Cheesecake is not going away, and there's still the national championship coming up soon. But after that tournament, I'd like to take some time to design my 3-pound Beetleweight robot and hopefully start my journey anew in the Beetleweight class. Thanks to everyone for watching, make sure to leave a like if you've had fun so far, and stay tuned for more.